I started playing piano for rehearsals for mm. West End shows, mm -hmm. doing a bit of pit playing, started doing music for kind of sort of off West End things, and then drifted into bands. Mm. And around that time, Jimmy Somerville, who was also run away to London like me, gay run away from Glasgow, uh, Bronski Beat happened, and he said, well, why don't you come and play saxophone in yeah. Bronski Beat? Yeah. And I looked at my crowded diary, which involved <laughs> mostly signing on, <laughs> I thought, yes, I could probably find time to be in a chart-topping pop band, thank you very much. <laughs> and that's how that began. Amazing. Um, presumably it wasn't chart-topping from, from the get-go, or was it quite a quick thing? It was. I mean, Jimmy, Bronski Beat happened, they did, I mean, partly because Jimmy's voice was so distinctive mm. and so extraordinary. And also, he ca he's one of those people who manages to embody in himself the experience of a, of a kind of group of people, new experience. So he was the kind of anthem singer and standard bearer mm. for all of us who were in similar circumstances there. Not just gay people, but anyone who'd kind of felt that they were at odds with the world and needed to run away and make themselves up again. Yeah. Um, and people heard it and responded to it straight away. So Bronski right. Beat made one single, which went straight to the top five, yeah. and then went off to New York and made an album, which went straight into the top five. So it was, there was no sort of preparation sure. in the way that you're meant to have right. slogging up and down the M6 in a van. <laughs> My first gig was the Montreux Pop Festival. Wow. And then Jimmy and I left Bronski Beat and formed a new unit, the Communards, and, and I kind of went in at top level, yeah. if you see what I mean, or near to the top level. Yeah. Do you, do you wish you were prepared for that in some way? What, what, would, what would preparation even look like? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's quite a... You know, you're 22, you're 23. You don't really have the necessary skills to cope with... In particular, the rewards that it brings, mm. money of that kind um, chucked at the under 40s uh, is mm. often not a good idea. Sure. I had a brilliant manager who did manage to rescue some of it from my spendthrift ways. Um, but also it does kind of turn your head very quickly. To have this kind of vindication and success and everyone mm. thinks you're marvellous and the kind of people tend to say yes to you and doors open. Yeah. You get used to that very quickly and that could be quite a corrupting yeah. thing. So you have to sort of find a way of remaining grounded. It's difficult mm. to do that because also because your life changes so much. Cool. Love those things where people win the lottery and they say on the news, will it change you? And they say, oh no. no. And then they get in a <laughs> helicopter and fly away. It's, it's that sort of thing. This is Premier Christian Radio. Where faith comes to 